Hello, hello, hello. How are we all doing today? It has been a rough ride, I can tell you that. Coming back to the UK, catching COVID while not being vaccinated, it was game bloody over for Crypto Conscious, I can tell you that much. But now I'm back and ready to crack. So, just want to say thank you for all the kind messages I received. Some really nice ones out the blue. Some like, have you still got bloody COVID, mate? Can you hurry up and get it over with? I was trying my best, boys. I was trying my best. Now, a lot's happened while I've been away. So we need to check out this little Cosmos hub badger, don't we? Moving from Atom 1 to Atom 2. I'm going to do my best to review the changes as quickly and as simply as possible. Firstly then, what we're going to look at is why the move? Why are we moving from 1.0 to 2.0? Secondly, what's new in the game for the Cosmos hub? We're going to look at the four new horsemen one by one and identify what their skill sets are. Next, what on earth is going on with tokenomics? And finally, what about all these naughty little controversies? So let's get bloody into it. So firstly then, why the move to Atom 2.0? Without drowning you in too much complexity, this is the most important part. Firstly, I just want to break down a common misconception. Atom is not the token of the Cosmos ecosystem, okay? Atom is the governance token of the Cosmos hub, but the Cosmos itself is more broad and represents all of the chains on the Cosmos. Now, if we look at the Cosmos stack in general here, this has been funded by the hub, and what we can see for the entire Cosmos is three brilliant things that have come into play. The Tendermint consensus, the IBC relayers, the inter-blockchain communication, where chains are able to communicate cheaply and quickly and it's generally very secure and the cosmos sdk where where new entities coming on the cosmos are easily able to plug and play new modules into their products so fundamentally the excellent ecosystem has already been established there's a ton of new blockchains there's billions of dollars of capital and now it's time for the cosmos hub to bloody evolve isn't it so this is what this is all about it's the next step of evolution and these are the four horsemen that we're going to ride into the sunset so let's start with these four horsemen and see what's new. Firstly then, I'm going to go over into chain security. If I go on coingecko.com, we can see that the Cosmos Hub has a market cap of nearly £4 billion. That's an enormous amount of money, right? However, however, smaller chains on the Cosmos, such as Litecoin, for example, have a total market capitalization or value of all their tokens of just under £4 million. Now, if I was a bad actor, I could buy £2 million worth of Litecoin. I could use this to manipulate the voting and destroy Litecoin from within. However, what Cosmos intends to do with Interchain Security is use some of this £4 billion to support smaller entities and make them more secure. Hence the name Interchain Security because it's cross-chain from the Cosmos hub to smaller chains. This benefits smaller chains massively because they no longer have to search for validators. They no longer have to build these relationships. They can simply pay some money, get access to some of this liquidity and be more secure in general. This will allow the chain to specialize and focus on what they do best, building a platform, using the Cosmos SDK modules and stuff. So generally beneficial all around and it brings a lot of value to the Atom token. Zaki, one of the main guys in the Cosmos crypto sphere, has stated that interchain security has already led to a lot of new projects coming onto the Cosmos. Let's hope this upward trend continues as the road becomes smoother and smoother for our four bloody horsemen. All right, on to horseman number two. Going to go across here to liquid staking. I have made videos on liquid staking before, however, to just briefly explain what this means, I'm going to show you a little graph, which is also in the Cosmos Hub white paper, if you can be bloody bothered to read it. Basically, it goes like this. There are applications like Quicksilver, okay? So what normally happens is, on Kepler Wallet, I have my Atom token, I stake my Atom token, and then I get my staking rewards. Done and dusted, right? Takes about 21 days to unbond. Now, what Quicksilver, one of the consumer chains on the Cosmos, intend to do is be a little bit of a game changer. You would stake your Atom with Quicksilver, okay? So you would still receive receive staking rewards but on top of that you would also receive Q Atom. With your Q Atom you'll be able to use this on other decentralized financial applications and this will allow you to get even more rewards. So rewards on top of rewards. This methodology has been around for some time on Solana and has been a long time coming for the Cosmos. Many believe this to be the future and the intent is to expand this across all chains in the future. So no longer will you have to stake your Atom and it just exists giving you returns. You're also going to be able to manipulate another token that you receive once your Atom is staked. Pretty next level if you ask me. Horseman number three. Let's go with the interchain scheduler. Now this one is a little bit complicated, but I'll try and break it down as best I can. We know that with interchain security, validators are going to validate on multiple chains. So they're not just going to validate on Atom, they're going to validate on chain A, chain B, chain C which certainly increases complexity for the validator, but we'll get into that at another point. So if we look at chain ABC, with this new level of connectivity, it opens up a lot more tools for the Atom token. What normally happens is, for example, some people might conduct arbitrage, where they realize, oh, Atom is cheaper on Osmosis than it is on another DEX. So they buy it on Osmosis and sell it on the other DEX. And bots run the scripts and that's how it's done. People also like to front run transactions, so they'll see high transactions about to occur. They might pay this higher fee here in order to buy a token at a lower price and then sell it to that person initiating the other transaction. So there's lots of little crafty ways to make a couple of extra pounds in the crypto space. Now what the Cosmos Hub intends to do with the interchain security is to connect all of these together, make it more transparent, 
and essentially extract the most value from these transactions and redistribute that to people that own the token and a treasury that they'll like to set up, which we'll get into in a moment. Although it does appear more complicated, the actual goal is simplicity in the future to help out these separate consumer chains as well as Atom. So the final of the four horsemen is the interchain allocator. So this is essentially aimed at developing strategies for economic coordination. Essentially, if interchain security exists between the Cosmos hub with the Atom token and a different chain, kind of like organizations, if they both have investments in each other, like Pepsi and Coke, they both have incentives for each other to do well as they both profit from it. For me, this is actually the greyest of the four horsemen. It's just an idea that isn't solidly formed. Look at these non-fully formed ideas a bit deeper. It will allow the Cosmos hub to receive profits and rebalance portfolio assets. I guess they will be receiving assets from the consumer chains that they are part of, particularly if some of those assets are strategically held and there's a return on those investments in terms of inflation. It increases Atom's exposure and yeah, fulfills political alliances. But again, for me, the grace and the weakest of them so far, but understandably a mechanism must be in place to regulate this and these connections if a DAO is not to be used or trusted. So the scheduler and the allocator are supposed to work together where the scheduler monetizes the IBC successes and the allocator is more focused on monetizing the successes of the actual chain itself, where the connections will hopefully thrive. But of course, if they don't, pew, we all know what can happen. All right, so those are the four horsemen. Now, thirdly then, tokenomics changes. This is the one that gets me a bit nervous. So what the Atom devs have decided to focus on is creating a treasury for Atom 2.0. We can see here how everything is distributed. Validators, delegators still get their commissions and the allocator and scheduler resources will go to the treasury, which will be used for public goods and growth. Now to boost this treasury initially, the tokenomics is intended to be changed drastically. Now, a lot of people have been saying that the Atom tokenomics is already damaged, right? Because um, this is the original tokenomic theory. This is 60 months, so five years. We can see that over an elongated period of time, there is a consistent increase in the total number of atoms in circulation. And this hasn't changed for many years. This worries a lot of people because it represents a dilution of their assets. Let me quickly explain. So this is just a basic demand and supply graph, but basically here is the price, okay? Now, this is the price of atom. So if the supply of atom, if this curve moves this way, it should be S1 to S2, but don't worry about that. If this curve moves downwards here, so we've got an increase in supply of atom tokens, and the demand remains the same. Look what happens to the price of it. Large increase in supply or a sustained increase in supply over time with the demand remaining the same will result in a lower value of atoms. So in the short run, what they intend to do is have a massive issuance which will fund the treasury, which many are understandably concerned about. We don't want our asset value diluted. However, over time, over a long period of time, over a couple of years, this will eventually reduce and go back down to very minimal levels. There is also a safety mechanism that kicks in that goes back to the old inflation methodology if too much is unbonded. So if too much gets unbonded, inflation will increase to a certain amount and then more people will bond their tokens again. So the long run argument is this is beneficial for Atom. The short run argument is this is beneficial because the treasury will be created and therefore they can use it to expand the chain and fund all of these and fund the four horsemen that they've been talking about. And we can see over a long period of time, the cumulatively issued Atom will reduce. Whereas if we had the old policy, Atoms will just keep consistently increasing. So. Long term good, short term meh, but I do understand why they're taking this approach. All right, finally then, we can see at the moment there is a 58% yes vote for Atom 2.0 and some big players have voted veto, which I think is a beautiful, healthy thing. It means growth in the ecosystem and people are able to get their point across and get their point heard. We're developing this together for the betterment of everyone. Now, some serious questions have been raised. Some big validators are in favor of this. Some mid-level validators say no. Stakefish, one of the massive ones, has chosen to abstain. So it's a fascinating time for everybody. As usual, the big boy Binance stays out of it. So the controversy then, people do actually get frustrated that the big boys stay out of it. It gives others greater power in the vote. Another issue is the increasing in complexity for validators. If you validate Atom token, then you will also have to validate all these other consumer chains at the same time. If you make one mistake, that will apply to all. So validators are gonna have to deal with that increasing complexity on chain. Next, what about this treasury? Now in economics, public goods are for the good of everybody as it can't be controlled by regulatory bodies and you have complete sovereignty over who you send it to and what you do with it, providing it's not stored on a custodial exchange. But what is the public good they're talking about this needs to be fleshed out in more detail we have seen in the past that DAOs decentralized autonomous organizations will vote for projects that have no merit and a lot of these DAOs that have the voting power are validators just look at some of the projects that got onto osmosis in the earlier days so can we really trust all of these funds going to good public goods I'd like to see a stronger governance structure and see who's in charge of these governance structures perhaps implement a system like Monero where projects are needed and people put bids in for them and then funds are released incrementally that would be quite nice but I need to see that this is governed very well and the funds are used used to really develop this system and make it thrive because there's a lot of potential here. Next with interchain security, 
some believe this is a bit basic and they're already pushing for mesh security uh, which was mentioned by Sunny, which I think is a little bit cooler. So not only is the Cosmos Hub giving into chain security to, to other consumer chains, but actually in the reverse, these consumer chains could be could be having a stake in the Atom token, which provides a kind of double layer of security on both sides. It's argued that down the line, although this increases complexity somewhat, this will be the future where a multitude of chains secure a multitude of chains all at the same time. A complex but beautiful beehive that grows and thrives. Another issue with interchain security is yes, it is going to increase complexity for validators and therefore have more infrastructure demands, which will obviously increase costs. So does this mean that only the big boys can stay in? If that's the case, then centralization will increase massively. And that's not what we're about, is it? We're looking for decentralization. And at the moment, with all this controversy, it's beautiful to see everybody coming from all sides and decide how to take the Cosmos Hub forward. We need to keep it this way. So let's hope smaller validators aren't pushed out. So overall, I have to say this is an incredibly complex series of improvements and it's a lot for people to get their head around and I fully understand that. I hope this has helped in some way to break down the structure, a little bit of what I feel about it, and please put your comments down below. It'll be really interesting to see what you think. I do believe that if this is done well, if the treasury funds are used correctly, if our four horsemen develop in the correct way, with us actually having solutions rather than just questions, the Cosmos Hub and the Cosmos could grow exponentially in terms of its value and use case. So yeah, I'm quite excited down the line. It's great to be back in the game post-COVID. Hope you all have a bloody good day and I'll see you all again.